What if I told you that Helldivers 2 is one of the best games that has launched this year? Believe me, it's blowing my mind even saying that. You see, the first time I saw the trailer to this game, I thought it was just going to be some over-the-top, action-packed, shoot some aliens, and call it a day. And that's essentially what it is. But what if I also told you that Helldivers, or more specifically Helldivers 2, is a legitimate PvE game? No joke, fellas. If you ain't packing in this game, if you don't have the right setup, the right gear, the right builds, the right teammates, you will find yourself getting absolutely boned into oblivion by a horde of alien bugs or an assortment of giant robots. This game is a game that is unyielding. It says, hey, you like to feel overwhelmed? Well, how about we crank that up to 11? How about we just bring enemies on top of you nonstop until you and your entire squad break? And what's crazy is because of the comical, over-the-top nature of the game, you think this is not a serious game or that it wouldn't actually pose a challenge. Fellas, that's the beauty of Helldivers 2. Yes, it has that over-the-top humor, that starship trooper. We're here to kill these alien commie bastards, all in the name of liberty. And yes, the one-liners your character says throughout this entire thing is freaking hysterical. Like, I'm shooting my machine gun, and bugs are literally overwhelming me, and my character is just screaming, freedom! Who does that? Helldivers do that, which is essentially what you are in this game. But I just want to be clear before we go any further. Despite the comical nature of this game, it is not to be trifled with. This is a game that will punish you for not playing strategically that will punish you for not committing to loadouts and most notably will punish you for dropping airstrikes right on your teammates because friendly fire is on in this game and yes airstrikes really hurt and if you're like me and you've got teammates like i have had for the past few days they love to drop orbital airstrikes amongst other airstrikes literally in the middle of the squad my favorite part is when they're running out there with the orbital airstrike and then they die which of course results in the orbital airstrike falling to the ground on their corpse which happens to be right next to me, which results in my ass being blown to orbit five seconds later. Even though friendly fire will annoy you in this game, it's an added element that I think needs to exist in the chaotic nature of Helldivers 2. And despite the comical intro of this game, you'll find that Helldivers 2 truly feels like you're in the midst of battle. You feel it. The combination of audio, the amount of enemies that are swarming you, the debris, the warfare, the destructible environments, the things that you're shooting that are also blowing up all the destruction around you. You can literally watch a nuke go off and you can feel the blast almost as if you are in the game. The realism here is crazy and I can't express how strange it is to say that considering how comically over the top this game is. But let's go over everything you need to know about Helldivers 2. Helldivers 2 takes place a century after the first game ended. Super Earth became victorious versus the Terminates and its other foes at the end of Helldivers 1 and he discovered faster than light technology to assist them in exploring and conquering the galaxy. But using this new tech came at a cost. It required a steady supply of substance known as E-710, which is easily found in the corpse of Terminates. Yeah, you see what's happening here? So back to where we went, baby. This time setting up Terminate farms to gather and house as much of this resource as possible. Eventually, the Terminates end up breaking free of their farms. And at the same time, a new enemy appeared out of nowhere, the Automatons. Thus, the Super Earth armed forces mobilized the Helldivers once again. And they need every man, woman, and child over seven to help combat this growing threat. And that's a literal quote from the game. Now you don't play as your own personal created character like most games. You play as hundreds of soldiers that your personal destroyer ship holds. When one dies on the battlefield, another gets sent down to replace them. Now because of this, you also don't upgrade or customize your character either. All upgrades and unlocks are done to your ship, giving your armory more weapons, your ship more technology, and your soldiers more armor. Then you just outfit your ship's hell divers with what you want on the field. Now after a super basic tutorial, the game talks you up by saying how easy this is going to be for you because you look like a natural hell diver and with quotes god given talent but then when you're thrown into your ship and then allowed to pick your own mission that's when things get wild now the galactic war map in the front of your ship is where you actually go to select and view the war effort and select those missions and currently we're fighting a war on two fronts the terminate inhabited planets which are the orange sections and the automaton planets which are in the red sections this is where the community comes into play we all have the same major your order. A goal for all of us to reach before the week's timer runs out. The first week's goal is to liberate all planets between Super Earth and the barrier planets, those being Heath and Angel's Venture, the two terminate infested planets. You also have your own personal order that when completed will give you metal. 
parts, which are used to unlock new weapons, upgrades, customization options. And don't worry, guys, we're going to dive into that here in just a bit. But back to the gameplay. You choose one of these highlighted regions, depending on which alien you want to fight against. The map will then zoom in to show you all the planets within that region, which have been liberated already, and also which ones the Hell Divers are actively fighting against. Highlighting a planet will then show you a liberation progress bar, letting you know how close a planet is to being fully liberated by you and your fellow Hell Divers. Now, choosing one of these planets will then zoom you in again and offer you multiple zones with missions within them across the planet's surface. You'll also see ongoing missions that other players are in that you can join, and these will be the white hexagons that appear and disappear across the planet. Now, when you hover over a zone, it will show the operation status with three symbols. These just indicate which three of the mission you've completed in that zone. Completing more missions in a single zone gives you increased amounts of medals. Now, once you click into a zone, you're given multiple missions to choose from. Now, the mission's examples include conducting geological surveys, launching nukes, evacuating civilians, collecting E-710, destroying nests, eliminating high-value targets. These are just some of the main objectives, and there's lots more to do on the planet, like side objectives, looting, taking down enemy posts, and how much you do depends on how quick your team is able to coordinate and move from objective to objective. This is because each mission has a timer. Some missions you have somewhere around 10 minutes, others 12 minutes, and then you have missions that have a 40 minute timer. Those are your big ones. Yes, some of them do take the entirety of 40 minutes. Now, the time it takes you to do things will also heavily depend on the difficulty you select, which can be changed at the bottom of the screen when viewing the map. Beating the hardest available difficulty, though, will unlock that next difficulty. And the beautiful thing about the higher difficulties is they give you more experience. They also allow you to find rare samples. And not just find rare samples, you will absolutely need those higher difficulties to get those super rare samples, which are necessary for your ship upgrades. And believe me, fellas, this is what makes all the difference in your loadouts. Depending on what those upgrades are, is the difference between you being some pissant cadet or an actual hell diver. Now, let me just bring up a point about selecting your mission that I love. I love when you select the mission, you can walk to the front of the ship here, and you're literally traveling to that point on the planet. You're seeing this happen in real time. This is like our helm in Destiny 2, if our helm actually did something. Then you proceed to walk over to this pot. You'll get in it, select the abilities you want to bring on that mission, those abilities called stratagems, and then you launch yourself down into the planet to start wrecking aliens in the name of democracy. Now, the gameplay is really the meat of Hell Divers 2, and this will be the reason why you like this game. No, it's not necessarily the best in terms of third-person mechanics. You even have an option to aim down sights, shooting in first person, and by no means is anything here bar setting. What Hell Divers 2 is, though, at its core, is a strategy game, except it's real-time strategy. You're in the midst of a horde. And like I said a second ago, this game really turns things up to 11 when it's suddenly just like, hey, you've got three, four ads maybe in front of you. How about we just put down 10 dropships, four tanks, and we suddenly surround you with artillery fire. Look, I don't know what kind of AI system the ads here in this game operate off of, but let me just say, you can find yourself being surrounded so damn quickly. Now, when you're immediately thrown into an alien world, your map shows objectives, and your team can plan where they want to go in order to tackle those areas. The issue is, is that on the harder difficulties, even in the areas that are supposed to be safer, quote unquote, safer, the moment you land, all hell just breaks loose. I find for like the first five minutes after landing, which is right at the very beginning of the mission, it's just a fight to survive. It's almost like you're trying to gain a footing to even be in this area. So before you can even move to these objectives, you just got to live through this onslaught of enemies that are constantly coming at you when you first land. Now, the arsenal of weaponry you have to choose from includes a primary weapon, a secondary weapon, grenades, which ranges from frag grenades to incinerating grenades and others, and stratagems, which have a variety of different things that will greatly change how lethal you are. You've got orbital strikes, jetpacks, stun bombs, minefields, sentries, heavy weapons, rail guns. Dude, you can literally get a drone that follows you around everywhere and shoots at everything you shoot. Now, what's amazing is that it's not a one size fits all. You see, just obtaining that higher ranked thing is not suddenly going to make you better in every single encounter. This changes depending on the activity that you're running, or most notably, the mission objective. If you're having to blow up nests over and over, then you want to kit out your entire loadout with airstrikes. Literally just load it down with airstrikes so that you can make it rain on each of those alien nests. If it's a defense mission, you want to rock sentries. I literally have a mortar sentry, a mini turret, an auto cannon, and the mission where we just have to kill a number of enemies and survive as they try to swarm us, I just load out my entire kit with nothing but sentries. And at the very beginning of the mission, when we land, I start throwing these things down. Again, I made the comment earlier in our stream 
game that this is like a tower defense game except it's not just you placing defenses or airstrikes around the map and then you just let things play out no you're on the map you're in the shit you misplace an airstrike you just killed your teammates or yourself you put down a turret but your turret is suddenly getting run over by an alien you think standing next to it is going to somehow help you no you get run over too that's the beauty of it i love the game is like this you will find yourself getting overwhelmed to the point where you're like oh my god i think i need to strategize better than this because this is painful now you do have a set number of lives that you and your entire squad start off with and in order to succeed at a mission you want to complete the objectives most notably the main objectives you can also do optional objectives and you want to extract now the resources you're extracting isn't loot but instead experience or at least full experience on top of that you'll find rare materials throughout the map that increasingly become more and more rare the higher the difficulty is and if you die and don't properly extract you don't get to bring those resources back and those are the resources you need to upgrade your ship so the gameplay loop here is very simple land on a planet complete main objectives while fighting to survive extract from the planet successfully grant yourself full experience and the currency you need to purchase upgrades and on top of that you will also obtain metals that you can use to purchase new weapons new grenades and more from the war bonds now you don't really want to rush through the main objective too fast as doing the optional objectives or those secondary objectives can net you good resources number one you can come across samples which is what's necessary to upgrade your ship number two super credits this is actually the microtransaction currency that you can find literally in these missions and you can use those to purchase items in the shop or the premium war bond and then you have the currency republic points which is what's used to purchase new stratagems now there are tons of enemy outposts that range in size and difficulty and believe me guys they range greatly some outposts just have a couple normal enemies and then the next thing you know it you've got this giant freaking alien bug that's literally the size of the helm that's defending this area but again this all comes back to the main objective that is the priority you have to beat the main objective and you want to try your best after beating the main objective to extract believe me it is so easy to get sidetracked and attack horde after horde or at least defend yourself against horde after horde but you don't really want to get too carried away doing that over and over because you will eat through your time and this is where teamwork and communication is so important when you and a team are like working in unison dude when you get that synergy down and you're a well-oiled machine you will be running through these enemies at least until you get to the higher difficulties yes there are points where you do get checked but again it all comes down to how well you and your teammates operate with one another which is why this game has a ping system but personally guys for this game i think you need open communication especially at difficulties insane and above nothing sucks worse than when you're over there trying to input arrow keys in a terminal and your teammate throws a damn airstrike right on the terminal which is why you need a mic to say hey asshole what the hell i'm trying to play obj right now now i want to talk about the arsenal of weaponry you have to choose from there's quite a bit guys from assault rifles pistols to shotguns to rail guns rocket launchers to machine guns one thing i do like about the game is that the weapons feel real and the reason why i bring that up notice the circular reticle that's actually where your shots are shooting and if it's a heavy sluggish weapon it takes time to actually get that weapon pointed at the enemy which makes sense but that's a level of realism that we don't see in other shooter games it's like yeah i've got this two-ton machine gun that i could just whip around like a feather and have no issues going from target to target that's not the case in this game however when you do aim down sights it is a bit easier to go from target to target granted you do feel that level of sway especially on some of your more heavier weapons now the devs also did a really good job of limb separation and i know that seems like an odd thing to bring up but this is a built-in system here where you can literally see the limbs and the enemies that you're shooting as they begin to break down and this is an important factor you can literally watch the armor on certain enemies break apart you start to see points where the enemy becomes vulnerable you see areas that you need to shoot you can blast legs off of bugs to slow them down you don't like the chainsaw arm of this robot shotgun and off this is that level of realism that i really like now something that some people are going to either really love or really hate is the explosions in this game and let me just say guys it is everywhere when someone drops a hell bomb and then activates it you don't just step over 50 meters and go okay i'm gonna watch the hell bomb come and wreck everything in front of me brother you're about to get destroyed you need to get the hell out of the way dude the moment i hear an airstrike and i see that light next to me i am running for my life i can literally feel it in my soul as i'm sprinting away from that because i know i'm about to get destroyed the explosions in this game is insane explosions from your teammates explosions from your own weapons explosions from the enemy's weapons and enemy artillery hell there was one time we found a nuke that
that was buried in the ground and I dropped a simple supply pot and it hit the ground and hit the nuke and we all died. Or at least everyone on my team died except me. For some reason, I had one shot of health. You're going to find that your body is going to get ragdolled all over the place. And the only thing that is keeping your limbs together is the power of liberty. I guess in this case, liberty. Trust me, guys. When you start listening to these one-liners, they just embed themselves in your mind. Now, with all this being said, and despite the comical nature of everything, the hecticness, the chaoticness, despite all of that, I just want to kind of step back for just a second and just say, damn it, this game is beautiful. The planets look alien, but also grounded, as if they could be real planets. Sometimes you're trudging through a snow-filled biome, and you can feel your character being sluggish and slowed as they're going through that snow. And yeah, you want to stop for a moment and just be like, oh, this is so nice. Maybe I would make a snowball and throw it at something. If I didn't have aliens constantly trying to kill me. But you can feel the heat of the sun battering down on you or admire these large open areas filled with water. Which, by the way, you cannot swim in. We're called hell divers, but we can't even go in water. Don't even try, guys. I tried swimming, instantly died. Sometimes you'll find yourself, though, in a forest-like biome at night, and you're barely able to see. Or a long, long stretch of plains sprinting like a madman from hundreds of bucks. It's hard to appreciate the beauty of these areas and the realism of these areas as it's constantly blowing up all around you and you're finding aliens that are all trying to rip your head off. But I gotta just say, guys, this is a gorgeous game. Now, something I wanna bring up that's really interesting about this game, a little customization, is that if you hold your reload button, you can actually change the rounds per minute of your weapons, which is really cool because you can do this while on the fly. You can even change the zoom of certain guns. I don't believe this was actually even said in the tutorial, but it's a neat little thing here that the devs here at Hell Divers added. Now, let's talk microtransactions. We've already went over ship models, stratagems, how to upgrade them, how to get all those things. And yes, all of those things are accessible. But I want to bring up War Bots. This is the game's version of a battle pass. There's a free version and a premium version, which costs a thousand super credits. Here's where you're going to be spending your medals, which you can get from completing missions, finishing orders, and exploring. War Bonds consist of tons of gear and customization options. New guns, new grenades, boosters, and these are actually items that give your entire squad a big buff. Things like spawning and respawning with full ammo, increasing radar range, increasing reinforcements, traversal buffs. You've got also armor present in these battle passes, capes, player cards, emotes, and of course, super credits. Now, both the free and premium war bond works like a Fortnite battle pass, where you can only start unlocking items that are in the later pages when you spent enough medals on the earlier pages. Now, the reason why we're bringing all this up is because we need to talk about microtransactions in this game. The game does have a shop and it rotates items every day that so far has only included armor. Now, some of this armor does have passive boosts, like legitimate benefits. One being 30% reduction to recoil when prone or an increase to grenade inventory. And if you have the premium war bond, which costs a thousand super credits, that gives you access to weapons that are only found on that premium pass. And these are weapons that can do elemental damage or armors with different stats and passives, entirely new grenades and new boosters. And that's kind of the conflict right now, considering that this game is not free to play, but instead a paid game. But you do have options and tangible benefits that you can get by paying for. You can pay $10 and get the premium war bond and start using your medals to unlock the items there immediately. Now, with that being said, you could also get super credits in the game itself. Remember, we just talked about going around the map and exploring the map. You can use those super credits to purchase the premium war bond. Now, will it take you a lot of time? You damn right it will, but you can do that. Now, I'm not trying to say Hell Divers is terrible for this, but when we talk about pay to win or pay for power, understand that's the ability to spend money on a game to give you access to items that give you an advantage over other players who do not spend money. Most notably, my armor set. This is a fantastic armor set that I got with like the deluxe version of this game. This game, technically speaking, and again, I love Hell Divers too, it does have some pay to win features. By spending money, you gain access to things that other players will probably eventually get access to, but it would take them so many hours to get to. And yes, these items offer tangible benefits. It's not like these are cosmetics. No, these are legitimate weapons and legitimate armor pieces and legitimate buffs that do in fact make a difference. Yes, you can obtain super credit bundles from the free war bond, but instead of using those medals to purchase weapons, you're using them to purchase super credits, which is going to limit your arsenal for quite some time. I just want to point this out, guys, and I'm really curious to see where things are going to go from here. I don't like seeing tangible benefits locked behind money. Again, none of this is making me want to stop playing Hell Divers 2, but I never like to see anything but cosmetics behind the paywall. Overall, guys, I'm enjoying Hell Divers 2. It's a fun, hysterical game. I'm curious to see how it's going to change.
change week to week, depending how we as a community do in fighting back these alien forces. In the meantime, if you're on the fence about this game, we will be live streaming it quite a bit. We're enjoying it. We're already jumping into end game. I have no idea what the plans are for the future of this game. From the developers, it was a little vague. They simply just said that the universe of Helldivers 2 will grow and change to give our players refresh gameplay, introducing new tools, new challenges, and new threats from around the galaxy. I'm being told that possibly they could be adding vehicles, which sounds crazy, but yes, considering the size of the maps, I guess you could do that. What I would love to see Helldivers do is add more alien races and add more objective modes. Something with a little more spice, right? Something that really puts the higher levels to the test. I believe the level cap for Helldivers 2 is level 50. And the question is, is what do we do then? What's the plan after that? But I will say, guys, it is quite the grind to get to that point. So if you do pick up this game for what it is now, you'll have plenty to do. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right. Bye.